two by two matrix formulation. So up to now, we have derived a four by four matrix equation. We looked at deriving transfer matrices. We saw that this was unstable. And while we didn't finish the story, the fix has something to do with distinguishing between forward and backward waves. And identifying those and sorting, that can be a little bit cumbersome. And it turns out, if we have linear homogeneous isotropic materials, we can do a different formulation where we don't have to sort the modes. And this is the two by two matrix equation, but it is not valid for fully anisotropic materials. We'd have to resort back to the four by four matrix equation and sorting the modes. But what you'll see is we end up at the same place in the end. Let's derive the two by two matrix equation. Let's remember what we did up to, but not quite where we derived the four by four matrix equation. So we started with Maxwell's equations, and here now we're going to be in linear homogeneous isotropic media. We then recognize that the derivatives in the x and y directions can be replaced with jkx and jky, and that's because the waves are only accumulating phase in those directions, and so we handle it analytically and not numerically. That simplified Maxwell's equations a little bit. Then we did some normalizations. We normalized our remaining spatial coordinate z. We normalized the wave vector components. And this made k0 drop out of our six equations. We then eliminated the longitudinal components ez and hz and rearranged the terms in the equations. And so we had this set of four equations that we then cast into a four by four matrix. That's the step we're going to do different here. But we have the same starting point of these four coupled differential equations. So here are our four coupled differential equations. Now, instead of lumping these into a single four by four matrix equation, we're going to put these into two two by two matrix equations. So first, we'll take the top two equations and put that into a matrix form. And we'll do the same thing for the second two equations. Notice these are two by two matrices. And when we combine these to get a single matrix equation, it will be a two by two matrix equation, thus the name two by two matrix equation. Also notice that in these matrices, we always have k's multiplying another k. We either have a k squared or k multiplying by k. So these two equations are the same regardless of what sign convention we're deriving this in. We're deriving this in terms of the positive sign convention, but it's just nice to note that these equations are the same even if we had derived with the negative sign convention. Now we're going to jump to something called the standard PQ form. And this is actually something that, that I recognized at one point in my studies. So here's our two matrix equations. And what we can do is look at this two by two matrix and call that P. And over here the, in the other equation, we look at this group of terms, this matrix, and we'll call that Q. That lets us write our two differential equations a little bit more simply just in terms of P and Q. Now what's really cool is that there's a lot of different numerical methods that end up at this PQ form. There's method of lines, there's rigorous coupled wave analysis, transfer matrix method, uh, we can do waveguide analysis, and all of these have this PQ form. And wave waveguide analysis aside, but transfer matrix method, method of lines, rigorous coupled wave analysis are actually all the same methods from this point forward. They have different ways of building P and Q, but from this point forward, they're all the same. We're going to solve that the same. And it's neat to see that those methods are the same. And if we understand one, we're really close to understanding another. It's just how that they, they differ and how they arrive at P and Q. And it's neat to see that. Okay, so we have our two matrix equations. Let's derive a matrix wave equation. We can roughly think of these analogous to the curl equations from Maxwell's equations, where when we combine those, we get a wave equation. 
we're going to combine these two equations to get a matrix wave equation. First thing we'll do is differentiate our first equation with respect to z. So what ends up happening is we'll get a second order derivative on the left and a first order derivative on the right. This matrix P is all just constants. It's not a function of z, so it comes to the outside of that derivative. Now we have the derivative of magnetic fields. Well, our second equation gives us an expression for the derivative of the magnetic field. It's Q times the electric field. So I can plug that in down here. And so we've replaced D, the derivative of the magnetic fields, with Q times the electric fields. We now have a single matrix differential equation just in terms of the electric fields. We can write this a little bit differently, and we'll let omega squared equal P times Q. Now we have a matrix differential equation, and this is a second order differential equation. Remember with the four by four, we ended up with a first order differential equation. That was not the wave equation. This is a wave equation. And this omega is now a two by two matrix, not a four by four matrix. Let's think about the solution to our matrix wave equation. And this is really where the magic happens of why we don't have to sort the mode. So this is just a reiteration of our matrix wave equation. If we were to forget for a moment that we have matrices here and just think of this column vector Vs as a single variable, we could write the solution this way. That is the solution to our matrix wave equation. Notice that solution looks very similar to what we did for the 4x4. Four four. However, since this is a second order differential equation, we have to explicitly write forward and backward waves separately. Our four by four matrix equation mixed forward and backward propagating waves. It forced us to have to figure out which one's which. Here, this is a two by two matrix equation. It's half the size. It gives us half the number of solutions. It gives us only the solutions for the forward waves. We have to write it a second time explicitly for the backward waves. So there is no need to sort the modes. We are writing that explicitly from the very beginning. And so we will have a forward propagating wave and we will have a backward propagating wave. That's the magic of this, no mode sorting. So remember if we have a function of a matrix, how do we do that? Well, we calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that matrix, and then instead of just applying that function directly to the matrix A, we would say the eigenvector matrix times that function applied to the eigenvalue matrix divided by the eigenvector matrix again. That's the same as if we had applied this function straight to A. So remember that when we talked about that previously. We have another matrix exponential that we need to use this for. So we can write our matrix exponential simply as the eigenvector matrix of omega times the eigenvalue matrix, exponential of the eigenvalue matrix divided by the eigenvector matrix. Now notice we initially calculated an omega squared. However, there's an omega here. Well, an interesting thing is omega and omega squared will have the same eigenvectors. However, the eigenvalues of omega squared come out as the eigenvalues of omega all being squared. So we have omega squared, that is our matrix. We calculate eigenvectors, eigenvalues. The eigenvectors are, are fine for omega, but we have to take the square root of the eigenvalues to get the eigenvalues of omega. So that's what's happening here. So our overall solution now for the electric fields can be written this way. And that's not a surprise from what we talked about before with the solution to the four by four matrix equation. A similar things happen. We have a column vector of unknown field amplitudes and it's being pre-divided by a matrix of known numbers. But a matrix of known numbers times a column vector of unknown numbers gives us another column vector of unknown numbers. So why keep doing that math? We will replace this simply with a column vector of unknown numbers, and we will call these the mode coefficients. 
Just like before, they're describing the amplitudes of our modes. Since we wrote the forward and backward waves explicitly, we have mode coefficients explicitly different for forward and backward waves. So after we do that combination, now here is our final form of our solution for the electric fields. Next, we need to consider the solution for the magnetic fields. Let's do that next. Well, electric and magnetic fields, they're coupled and they have the same basic form of the solution. So we're going to write that. They have to propagate the same because it's only one wave. It just happens to have an electric and a magnetic component. So the exponentials are the same. The mode coefficients are the same. What's different is what the fields look like. So I'm writing a V instead of a W because we have a different eigenvector matrix. The other thing I did a little bit different is I put a minus sign here and that is for convenience and we're free to do that because we haven't calculated the mode coefficients yet. If that was supposed to be a positive, I wrote a minus, we would simply get negative numbers in these mode coefficients. So at this point, since this is not calculated, our mode coefficients, I'm free to choose whatever sign I want here. And that will be a convenient choice as you'll see. So the first thing I'm gonna do is differentiate that equation. Well, on the left-hand side, we simply get the derivative of the magnetic fields. On the right-hand side, the V is constant, the C is constant, we have to maintain our order of operations, so we still have that same order. But the derivative of this matrix exponential, we simply bring that eigenvalue matrix to the outside. So we have the eigenvalue times our exponential. And we do that for both the forward and backward waves. So now we've taken the derivative, and notice there is a plus sign here. And that's actually why we chose a minus sign here, so that we would get a plus here, which we'll need in the next step. Okay, so that's what we got from the previous slide. Let's remember when we jumped to the PQ form, we had our equation with Q in it. We had an expression for the derivative of the magnetic fields. It was Q times the electric fields. And we also showed the solution to the electric fields was written this way. So imagine taking this expression and moving it over here, that gives us an expression for the derivative of the magnetic fields. Well, we have another expression for the derivative of the magnetic fields. That's here. But on the right-hand side, we'll have Q times this expression for the electric fields. That's what's on the right-hand side. Then we will multiply this out, and we end up here. Now, the left and right-hand sides have to be equal. The mode coefficients are the same. We have these exponentials that are the same, but here we have a V times lambda and a V times lambda. Over on the right, we have a Q times W and a Q times W. Clearly, V times lambda equals Q times W. If we solve this for our magnetic field eigenvector matrix, we simply bring the lambda over to the other side, and that is how we can calculate the eigenvectors for the magnetic fields from the eigenvectors of the electric field fields. So we don't have to solve a second eigenvalue problem. We only solve it once for the electric fields and write it immediately for the magnetic fields. Okay, so we derived a two by two matrix wave equation. We solved it for the electric fields and we ended up here. We then wrote a similar solution for the magnetic fields, but we had to write a V in here instead of a W and we did some mathematical magic, and we were able to calculate the eigenvector matrix for the magnetic fields from the eigenvector matrix of the electric fields. That makes sense. If you know one, you should know the other. So we have the solution to both. Let's lump them together. If we lump them together, we will call that psi, just like we did before, and here's where we end up. Does that look familiar? That's exactly where we ended up after doing the mode sorting in the 4x4 four four matrix approach. So let's summarize both formulations that we've seen. We now know that they have the same endpoint.
So both started at Maxwell's equations and they both ended in the same form. We just wrote these things a little bit differently. So the four by four matrix approach, we have to do that if we have anisotropic materials, but it requires us to do the mode sorting before we end up in our final form. Whereas if we have isotropic materials, or in fact, diagonally anisotropic is also a special case, but for isotropic materials, we can go through this PQ form, not have to do any mode sorting, and we end up at the same form. Either way we go, we're going to pick up from here and then apply scattering matrices to connect the multiple layers instead of transfer matrices, because that is stable and does some other neat things for us. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.